Okay, it's go time. All right, I begin preaching a new series today entitled Building a Great Life. We all want a great life. All of us want a great life. But today I want to bring to you as we begin this journey, not just this journey, but our journey into building a better life, I want to tell you if you're going to build a great life for God, it starts with one word. It starts with the word faith. If you're going to build a great life, you have to have faith. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter uh, 11, which is what we call the Faith Hall of Fame. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move through and select six people, really six verses from Hebrews, and I'm going to talk to you about what faith is and the importance of faith. Then after we end, uh, we have a stage set up right where the chapel is. For those of you who've been coming in the back, we're going to go right out there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about where the covered walkways are going to be, and then we're going to have Dennis George pray. It'll be real short right after the church, but I want you to know as you're praying where it would be and what it would look like. But in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said these words. He says, have faith in God. Those four words, have faith in God. There we go. Have faith in God. See those four words? How many of you, let me just ask you a question. How many of you know we, had to, we need to have faith in God? How many of you know in your heart of hearts, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise my hand first, that by now I should have more faith in God? Including me. How many of us wish we had more faith in God? Jesus says, have faith in in God. I want my faith to grow. But how does that happen? And why is it important? Well, I'm going to tell you six six ways it can happen from Hebrews chapter 11, as we've seen in other people's life. But I'm also going to show you that we must always remember without faith, we can't please God. My guess is that, that there are some, when you hear, oh, the pastor's going to talk about how to build a great life, that the pastor's going to talk about the fact that I need to come to church more. And let's be honest, and I'll raise my hand. How many of you think it probably would be better for us if we came to church more, right? Right? Some of y'all you're not so sure about. You expect the pastor to stand up here talking about building a great life, saying, you know what? Your life would be better if you read your Bible more. How many of you kind of know your life would be better if you, if you read your Bible more? How many of you expect the pastor to come up here and say, listen, here's how to build a great life. You need to pray more. How many of us know we need to pray more, right? Man, we all know. The truth is, we're never going to have a great life and we'll never please God if we don't learn to walk by faith. Jesus says, have faith in God. The question I want to answer for you in the next five or six minutes is, how do we have faith in God? You ready? Number one is by always remembering that faith is believing even when I do not see it. Faith is believing even when I do not see it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. What did the apostle Paul say? He said, For we live by faith, not by sight. Now, if we think about faith is believing even when I don't see it, that's hard, right? Because this is me. I am a seeing it is believing it guy. Show me the numbers. Show me what you've done for me, right? We don't live in Missouri, but I'm a show me person. That's the way we are. This is hard, but we have to understand first and foremost that there are times faith is believing it before we see it. And so it says faith is the confidence of what we hope for and the assurance about what we don't see. See, if we already saw it, there would be no faith. If, if we already knew what the collective number was going to be when we gave um, to the chapel of $2.5 million, if we already knew that, then it wouldn't be faith to give to it. If, if, if I knew as your pastor that we're about to give way past that, then there's no faith involved. Faith is believing God even before we see it. So as you pray in your heart, in your life, not just about this and the campaign and the chapel, but in general, just say, God, I'm going to trust you even when I don't see it. Here's number two. You ready? Faith is obeying God 
even when I don't understand it. Faith is obeying God even when I don't understand it. Right there in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 and 8, uh, there are two examples. Two examples. One is Noah. One is Abraham. They obeyed, listen to this, even when they did not understand it. Let's begin to read. It says, by faith, Noah, when warned about the things he had not yet seen, there it is, Noah, when warned about the things he had not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. Now, he, what, had faith that what God told him was something he should do, and he responded with action. What was his action? He built an ark. See, because that whole process of Noah building the ark, it hadn't rained, they hadn't, didn't need a boat. It was all about faith is trusting God even when I don't understand it. Now read on. He says, by faith, Abraham. Abraham, when called to go to a place where he would later receive his blessings and his inheritance, obeyed. Now notice, Noah built Abraham obeyed, obeyed and went, even though he did not know, there's the words, didn't understand where he was going. There are times that we need to understand that we, faith, is trusting God even when we don't understand it. But it always requires action, action. Noah built, Abraham had faith. We want to be as a collective church. We want to be the Noahs who build something that we don't yet see. But we have the faith to ultimately see the blessing that God wants for us. Here's number three. Faith is choosing God. Listen to this. Faith is choosing God's path even when it's not the easier path. That's number three. Faith is choosing God's path even when it's not the e easier path. And I want you to know that is countercultural. That is absolutely countercultural. Everything in our lives and everything we're taught, everything about me is I want to make things easier, right? If there's a new gadget comes out, a new this or a new that, I want to make things easier. Listen, faith is choosing God's path even when it's not the easier path. The example given right there in the Faith Hall of Fame is that of Moses. Notice what it says. It says, by faith, Moses when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose, notice that action there. He chose what? To be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Listen, the easier path for Moses, and he was blessed. The easier path for Moses was to just keep your mouth closed. Things were good. You're in, you're in Pharaoh's house. You're the prince of the land. Just keep your mouth closed. Let me tell you what. When it comes to giving and sacrifice for, for the chapel or the building, the easiest thing you can do is let someone else do it. The easiest thing you can do is let someone else or hope someone else does it. But I want you to know, faith, if you want to grow your faith, remember what Jesus said, have faith in God? Number four. Number three, excuse me, go back to that, my bad. Faith is choosing God's path even when it's not easier. Here's number four, you ready? Faith is giving what God asked me to give. Faith is giving what God asked me to give. Remember I talked to you about that chart and our, our eyes are naturally drawn. You, you just ask, say, God, what would you do through me for the chapel and the covered walkways campaign? And you give what God wants you to give. Say, God, can you have me go higher? Not what you want to give, what God wants you to give. Remember the story? You ready? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, uh, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. Now, let me just, there's a lot there. But why was Abel's sacrifice better than Cain's? Let me just put it to you straight. Notice, it doesn't tell us that Abel gave more than Cain. What it does tell us, and if you look through Scripture and you look elsewhere in Scripture, is that Abel gave the offering to God that God had told him to give. And Cain didn't. Cain gave God what he wanted to do wanted to give him. 
Abel gave God what God wanted him to give. As you pray through, make sure that you bring what God wants you to give, not what you want to give, what God wants you to give. Here's the second thing. And it says, by faith, listen to this, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks today. Those of us who give to this, and when that first couple who gets saved and meets here on the sand volleyball court, you participate in that wedding. When our kids and our grandkids get married in there, when someone who's been a faithful, dear saint of God of this church uh, passes away and we have the memorial service, you have the opportunity to speak into that. So remember, faith is giving what God asked me to give. Let's go to the next one, number five. Put number five up there. Faith is thinking, thanking God even before I receive it. Faith is thanking God even before I receive it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30 says what? By faith, the walls of Jericho, after the army had marched around them uh, for seven days. Man, by faith, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, he says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be for, done for you. Boy, you go all the way back to marching around Jericho. Can you imagine? You got Joshua talking to the children of Israel and says, listen, God has given us Jericho. And they say, well, what are we going to do? He wakes up in the morning. He says, we're going to march around. He goes, we're going to march around? That doesn't seem very effective. And he goes, no, we're going to march around. Why are we going to march around it? Because God's already given it to us. The next day they go to sleep. They wake back up. The next day, what do they do? They wake up. They said, Joshua, what are we supposed to do? He says, we're just going to march around it again. He goes, why are we going to march around it? Because God's already given it to us. Man, faith is thanking God before I receive it. After you fill out your card, whatever you're doing, if you're going to build your faith, you say, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I thank you that you're going to come through because I feel like I'm giving what you want me to give. Here's number six. Go to six. Ready? Faith is trusting God even if I don't get it. Faith is trusting God even if I don't get it. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. He says, these were all commended for their faith. The ones that are all through Hebrews chapter 11. They were all commended by their, by their faith. They built, they bought, they paid, they offered, they did all of those things. They were all commended for their faith because those things grew their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised since God planned something better for us. From an earthly perspective, it doesn't look like Moses got all that God wanted him to have because he didn't make it into the promised land. From an earthly perspective, it doesn't necessarily look like Abel or Joshua or on down the line. He says, but God had something better planned. But what did they have to do? They had to take the first step of faith. It says, so only together with us would they be made perfect. As you take this journey with us, realize it's a journey of faith. On the back side of that uh, sermon note insert, I'm not going to talk about it. All the answers are there. Most of that stuff is in the campaign brochure. Kind of tells you our theme verse, our four purposes to grow together. And so let me pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity just to celebrate what you continue to do in the life of our congregation. Father, we love you and we thank you for enabling us to have this opportunity to minister to the next person through the door, to stay on mission and do more ministry for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.